Cheers everybody, Graham from the Homebrew Network here. Gas Slug inspired me to do a get to know you video, so here I am. Uh, before we get started, I'm enjoying a nice sour, another Duchess. It's good stuff. Let's start off with a sip. Good beer. If you haven't tried one yet, <laughs> go out and get one. So, who I am, who am I? Who I am is Graham. I've been with the Homebrew Network now for a couple months. It's a great group. Uh, background noises are being supplied by my daughter, um, in case anybody's curious about what those weird noises could be. She is a little over six months old, and um, actually we're coming up on, uh, here in a week, we'll be about six and a half months old, so. As far as me, I'm 29, I currently live right outside of Rockford, Illinois, which is in north central Illinois, uh, we're about from Lake Michigan in downtown Chicago, Roughly two hours, maybe a little bit more, depending on traffic. Um, I was actually born and raised in Rockford. I currently work for the hospital system that I was born at, which is a little fun fact. Um, let's see, so I was born and raised in the Rockford area. I went to public school for a couple of years, and then my parents yanked me out and put me into Catholic school. <laughs> Woo! So I stayed in Catholic school until I graduated high school, which might explain why I am the way I am today. So uh, my apologies. Actually, I, I really don't care. If, if you're religious and you take offense, then you need to get a sense of humor. But um, I wound up going to community college after that. Got my associates. whoop de do because these days that doesn't matter. After I got my associates, I decided to, uh, I wanted to go into pharmacy. I wanted to make the big bucks. <sighs> this is way before I started brewing beer. I just wanted to make money, 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 money. Money! Sadly, though, this all came to a halt when I was introduced to Organic chemistry <laughs> and calculus. I just couldn't pass those classes. I got past first semester organic chemistry and the second semester just was a bitch slap. <laughs> it, was, it was like, hello, uh, did you pay attention first semester? Yes, sort of. Well, that's not good enough because you got to know everything. Yeah, that's what it felt like anyways. Benzene rings, all that shit. I, I couldn't get it down, so I said, fuck it. Switched uh, majors to uh, a degree I'd never heard of before. Honestly, the only reason why I picked the degree in the first place is because my parents were so upset with me that I spent so long in college already that I decided to switch majors. I was two and a half years into college and I decided, hey, I don't want to go that route anymore. And I had no plan whatsoever. And they knew this. Why? Because they're my parents and they know everything. <laughs> So um, I decided to switch majors, and I switched to a clinical laboratory science, having no clue what it was. Um, if you want the gist of what a clinical laboratory scientist is, um, currently they're called medical laboratory scientists. I still don't understand why they changed the title. I think it was just something for the people in some office somewhere who was in charge of the um, credentials for such a major to just do something. <laughs> I honestly don't know. So um, I graduated with a degree in um, health, health sciences college uh, with an emphasis on clinical laboratory science. Uh, most people in the lab they have a strange sense of humor. They 
don't like people. They don't have any people skills whatsoever, which is why they tend to work in a lab. Especially when you work with uh, someone in microbiology or the blood bank department, those people definitely like to be by themselves, and they are OCD, big time. Myself, on the other hand, I'm the opposite. I'm very outgoing. I like talking to people. I like joking around. I love joking around. I'm a class clown act, um, and uh, I... I'm not OCD. Well, I mean, there are parts of, um, I wouldn't classify myself as OCD. I am anal about little things when it comes to work, but for the most part, I, I could give two shits. So, uh, I currently work at a cancer center in my health system. I am uh, one of four um, scientists in the lab. We are in charge of screening blood and uh, doing um, differentials, looking at cells, running chemistry panels on blood and serum. Uh, we make sure it's okay for the patient to receive their chemo or radiation treatments. And um, based upon what we find, they either do or they don't. It's just that simple. Um, we do a variety of other things as well. Pretty much, uh, medical laboratory scientist plays with all the body fluids. You name it, we touch it. It is awesome. I'll cheers to that. So that's my background. Schooling and everything. Notice I said nothing about brewing. Yet. I didn't go to school for brewing. I didn't do anything like that. Everything I learned from brewing was from a book. And that uh, I will get to here in just a second. Um, my uh, home brewing started after I'd met my wife. Uh, we were dating at the time, and uh, we'd been dating for about five months. Back in uh, my birthday of 2010, so for all you who want to know and want to buy me gifts... I'll take them. I'll take them. I love gifts. Bring them. June 19th. Gash Slug, Ralph Bennett, Mike Stauffer, uh, all you guys, I expect presents now. You've seen this video. <laughs> but uh, seriously, um, I got my first brewing kit. And uh, I just got to say right now, my daughter is a party maniac over there. Are you having fun? Yeah. So it was a basic homebrew kit. <laughs> I had one bucket, the ale pail, and then I had one bottling bucket. And let me see what else it came with. Uh, I think it came with a capper, a bag of caps, And the kit was separate, I think. It was a, uh, a Bavarian wheat recipe that my wife had. Uh, it, it was, I, <clears throat> I didn't see it coming because before my birthday, my wife was asking what kind of beers I liked. And she later told me that uh, it was a screening process trying to figure out what kind of kit to get me. I must say it turned out awesome because what wound up happening was she gave me Charlie Papazian's book, uh, the Joy of Homebrewing, or it's the really thick one. I uh, let me go get that real quick. I'll show you. There you go. This is what got me started. Right here. This was my Bible for quite a while. It it really teaches you the basics. I started off with extract brewing. I guarantee you, uh, if you are interested in starting home brewing, do extract first. Learn the basics. But um, I can get into that later. Um, so I started reading the book um, after I ate my birthday cake, of course, because you gotta have your cake. You gotta. It's 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 good stuff. 
So, ate my cake, read my book, went to sleep, woke up the next day going, oh my gosh, I gotta read more. <laughs> so I read some more, and I found out that I would need some extra equipment if I wanted to make a really good beer. Um, I mean, I could have made a beer that was decent with uh, the setup that they gave me, but I want some extra stuff. So, um, what wound up happening next was uh, I googled where the local homebrew store would be, and once you know it, at the time I was living with my parents, and the store was 10 minutes from the house. Woo! Score! So, I made a trip down there with my wife, who was all about, oh yes, let's do it, let's do it. Little did she know, she created a monster. An awesome monster. Not a scary one, an awesome one. One that would create magnificent beers for many years to come. Oh, good stuff. So, um, that's how I started out. I want to say I did extract brewing for anywhere between three to six months. I started breaking into the whole all-grain brewing section of uh, the Joy of Home Brewing. <laughs> and uh, he goes into pretty good detail about it in there, but uh, most of what I learned from all-grain brewing, I, I learned off of YouTube, going to my homebrew store, asking the guy. Um, he's actually a member of the group. Alexander Candu, my homie. That man has solved so many problems for me over the years and has helped me out in so many ways possible when it comes to brewing. You, sir, are awesome. So, um, once I stepped up to all grain, I got myself a little orange cooler, five gallons. Um, and... It worked well. It did. It really did. It worked great, actually. Until I uh, decided oh, I want to. I want to make some bigger beers. I want to make more robust beers. So uh, I'm. Uh, I'm actually going to get into that too. I, I wound up getting a bigger cooler. <laughs> big cooler. Big ass cooler. I don't remember the size, but I went to. Uh, Oh, uh, Gander Mountain. I went to Gander Mountain. It was the winter time, and I couldn't find a cooler anywhere. We went to Walmart. We went here, there, anywhere. Last stop was Gander Mountain, and the only thing I could find was this big freaking cooler. Um, I want to say it was it was less than sixty quarts or uh, sixty liters. Let's see, so sixty. Uh, I honestly can't remember. It's been uh, a couple of years since I've used it, mainly because it fell apart because I used it so frequently. It just fell apart. <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> anyways, I wound up going to the bigger cooler, and uh, <clears throat> things were going great there. Little by little, I kept upgrading more and more. I got <clears throat> a banjo jet burner uh, and then I upgraded to having two banjo jet burners I still have those burners actually they've just been chopped up into parts and uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to figure out what to use them for right now uh, maybe someday I'll <clears throat> when I'm shooting another video I'll show you what I did to them They're, they are still <laughs> usable it's just they don't stand up right so um, <clears throat> I'll get into why that is here in a second. I <clears throat> I got a um, I got BYO magazine, and in one issue, in one issue, they had uh, an entire thing on the Brutus system. This guy's beer rig called the Brutus. I was in awe. I just stopped what I was doing and just... Oh, 
my gosh. My wife's name is Connie, and I I saw this and I said, oh my gosh, Connie, I have to get this. I have to build something like this. Now, I'm a guy, and um, when it comes to guys and, and, and women, our, our communication styles are different. When she heard me say, I got to build this, I got to get this, she was thinking, this is, this is what she heard. Someday, I have to build this. Someday, I have to get parts to build this. Over time, this will be done. It will not be done right away. It will not be done within the next few months. This will be years from now. This is what I said. I got to build this. I got to do this now. I got to get it done. Let's do this. <laughs> and the response I got from my wife was, oh, okay. <laughs> So, um, I spend the next few months researching, getting information, posting on websites. I was looking for welders, you name it. Um, lo and behold, somebody messaged me and told me that they built a uh, steel rig. And the guy that they built it for backed down on the deal, didn't want it anyways, so they were going to sell it to me. I bought it. And over time, uh, I want to say within a year after I bought the rig, I bought pretty much every single piece of equipment for the rig. I got the kegs, I got the pumps, I got the tubing, quick connects. And I surprised my wife one day. She came home and I had purchased a uh, plate chiller. She was not very happy with that because she wanted to know where the money came from. And I had the money set aside. It wasn't so much that she was mad that I bought it. It was more along the lines of I had set the money aside without telling her. It was my little beer fund. That beer fund quickly turned into um, the, uh, after, after a reality check, it, it turned into the, um, the oh shit fund for the house in case something breaks. <laughs> so, so that's what happened to that. Um... Because things change when you get a mortgage. Things change when you get a kid. Things, things just keep on changing. So, um, I wound up getting the rig. I wound up upgrading to everything. And um, that's where I'm at right now. Um, there is a debate about buckets and carboys. I still use both. Do I have a preference? Not really. I really don't. Um, so long as you clean everything thoroughly, you shouldn't have a problem with anything that you use. Um, so yeah, I've been brewing now for almost, what are we, 2014 now? So four years, just about four years I've been brewing. I'm still learning, I'm still... I'm having those moments, a uh, guy on Homebrew Network um, was surprised by an answer that I had given to a question. Uh, it dealt with um, evaporation rates and um, efficiency with uh, knowing your dead space in all your vessels. He was blown away by it. He had never considered that. And it's an honest mistake. Just about every home brewer will do that because they get carried away with doing stuff. They don't think about the little details like that. It's, it's really easy to forget. So his response was, uh, every time I think that I'm getting the hang of things, I am, um, <laughs> I'm going back to, uh, I'm, I'm currently running around thinking I know everything, but then I got to go back to crawling again. And that's kind of a, now that I think about it, that's an extreme uh, comparison because you're really not going back to crawling. You're just backing up a little bit. So, but um, I will agree with them. You know, every once in a while, you'll go along in the home brewing process. Somebody will say something or do something. Um, to You post a recipe. You, you say that you did something. I'll post a video talking about something. Somebody will come along and make a comment about something. And you know what? I'm not insulted. Um, criticism is welcome. Positive, I mean, it's, it's, it's a positive thing. Um, 
as long as it's constructive criticism. Obviously, if somebody's being an asshole, I'm going to ignore them, but um, I like constructive criticism. And that's what um, the Homebrew Network is all about. We're all about helping each other out. We're all about uh, having fun, shooting the shit, brewing beer, talking beer reviews, you name it. We got people from all over the world on this Facebook page. We also got the website, www.thehomebrewnetwork.com. Um, Ralph Bennett is in charge of the group and the website, and he's slowly getting the website up and running. Um, it's just going to be a great place to, like I said, post your recipes, get feedback, do beer reviews, um, uh, show videos, and uh, meet people from all around the world, get tips and tricks on anything you want to know. Um, it's a great place, great group of people, totally recommend it. So that is me, and uh, I hope I haven't taken up too much of your time. Um, so let's see, I, I think that's just about it. Um, like I said, check out Facebook and the uh, Homebrew Network, and um, maybe someday you'll be posting your own videos or your own recipes, and I'll get to know you. Cheers.